Hey everybody, Jason here of Jason Ellis Builds, trying out my new name. And today, while we're out here in the hangar, we're gonna work on these guys. So these are the torque tube, flap torque tube, and the torque tube bushings. Had a hell of a prop time getting these on and off the tube and trying to get these things installed. Today, we're solving that for sure. All right, so here's the thing. These, was that intro too much? Anyways, so these go down in here, and the problem I had discussed before is you have these bushings, and these bushings are ridiculously tight. Um, this one I basically forced on in the vise, and you know I put it on here, and you can hear it. It kind of goes clunk when it stops. Real problem. I've talked about it before, and a lot of different um, advice was to grease it up or put various different unctions and oils and concoctions to get this thing on here, and that has not really served well. In fact. Um, this one I've had a lot of cleaning all that crap off because it really was a pain. So I'm going to solve this in a different way. <clears throat> Let's talk about it. All right, so here we are looking at the plans. And again, this all centers around these bushings. And you do have to, these bushings, first of all, they come square or, well, rectangular. And you do have to do some minor stuff, but the, but not a lot. Um, the one thing you have to do is you have to cut this edge off right here. And this is so that when it's sitting in the plane, there's this piece of metal. The bushing basically sits right up against that like that. So you have to make that cut. Now it does give you the option to go through and do a bunch of more rounding and whatnot on these bushings if you want to. You don't have to. Um, no one's ever gonna see them. I mean, they're, they're deep down in there underneath metal plate. They're never gonna be seen. So the only thing <clears throat> would be lightning maybe, you know, cut some of this off to lighten this piece, but this piece doesn't weigh anything. I mean, it's really light. So I'm not going to do that. The other issue is, of course, as I said, getting them on and off of there, like, <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to have to put this in the vise to get this off. It's just not, it doesn't go on and off easily. Um, <clears throat> and it's most because of this powder coating. The powder, like it fits over this part beautifully, which is which is all it has to do. It only has to fit over this. That's the that's the thing that's important. And there's a reason why there's this piece down here that's got that has no powder coat. It only has to go here. The problem is to get it in the plane where it goes, you have to push it way down here into the middle to kind of leverage it down in there and then pull it back the other way. And then you have to figure out how to get the other one on over this powder coating to get it to here. And it's like, uh, Jesus. So <clears throat> we're going to solve this the way we're going to solve it. And it's just the easiest way, by the way, they did recommend using, uh, I forget what it was. I forget what the name of it is, but basically like, like an oil or a grease or a chemical, you know, WD 40 or something. The problem was originally I wasn't sure what to use because, uh, I didn't want to chew this up. This is a, I don't know if this is Dalran or what this is, but this is something that could be chewed up by that, over time and I don't want that. So instead, the solution that I'm going to go for is I'm gonna make an ever so slight cut right here. I'm just gonna make a cut right here so that this basically has ever so slight flex so that I can get it into place. Once it's in place and then once these two holes, once it's screwed in, it won't flex anymore and I can then put a pipe clamp around the whole thing and just clamp it down so that this is no longer an issue. So that's how I'm solving this. Easier than fighting with everything else, easier than solving for some mystery chemical that may or may not affect this down the road. And honestly, at that point, I can then control the tension in this because this is, I mean, this is so tight I can't move. But <clears throat> once it's on here, like there's very little tension here, um, honestly, there's, there's almost none but I can control how much tension is in here with the pipe clamp if I need to increase or lower the tension. Um, so that's how I'm going to solve it. I'm going to do the work right now. I'm going to go through and do the cutting, do the work. I'm going to put the camera up there so you guys can watch while I'm doing it and I'll talk over it as I'm doing the job. So here we go. So in the background, as you guys watch me puttering, you'll see that I'm running back and forth quite a bit. And that's because I misplaced some of the bolts that I need for this particular project. Um, I'm getting to the point where my stores of the various nuts and bolts and things are uh, dwindling, right? I'm getting down to the point where I, you know, at one point I had a million and 
three dash 13s or whatever bolts. And now I have, you know, three and I need four, you know, that sort of thing. And so usually they're here somewhere. I find what I have done a number of times is I'll take a bolt to test fit something. And instead of putting the bolt back in the, the container where I got it from, I'll put it on the table or something. And, and, uh, and I'll just continue to use it in that fashion. And what ends up happening is it disappears, you know, it walks away. So <clears throat> that's careful, your tools, your bolts and, and your supplies and whatnot will dwindle over the course of your production. And it will get to a point where you're running out. And so that's what happened in this one. And I did it, I just happened to find everything the right size. Um, I also, I went through and I was looking, I was like, I know I had one of these and, and I had used a, like an 11 on something instead of a 12 and, and, and the 11 was meant for something else. So I had to, I mean, the difference between 11 and 12 was tiny. It probably would have been fine, but, uh, I wanted to go ahead and use the right, well, right bolt in the right place. So I had to unscrew the thing and put the right one in and move it. So just know that that's a thing that's going to happen. You're going to lose bolts and things like that. Uh, and you know, you may have to call and, and thankfully Vans allows you to order them. Now, I don't know if you can order like a single bolt, um, but you can order probably in lots of 10 or by the by weight. So um, so that's that's what's going on there, running around in the background like a madman trying to find all those bolts. Um, what else is going on? So while I was at Sun and Fun, I <clears throat> first of all, I spoke to a number of you. A lot of people just came out of the woodworks. Um, some vendors knew who I was. That was weird. Like I'm sitting at a table having a beer. Like, and some vendors sit down and they're like, hey, you're Jason Ellis. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, that was bizarre, but kind of cool. And so I met with some really cool people, a lot of cool people. Um, and then of course I had someone come up from this beautiful crowd of people, uh, give me some uh, advice on simulators and flight hardware and all that other stuff. And we talked about a number of things, actually that happened twice. And uh, <clears throat> convinced me to play DCS. Uh, so DCS is, what does it stand for? Digital Combat Simulator? I'm guessing, I'm not sure. But it allows you to fly jets and things that I will never fly. So for a good example is the F-16. So of course that's sun and fun. I'm watching F-16s go back and forth. I love the F-16. Even as a kid, I thought the F-16 was just the sexiest, coolest plane ever. Um, yes, I know the F-18 is more useful, but the F-16 is faster. I know that the F-22 is probably pretty much better in every way, except I still like the F-16. You know, things like that. I love the F-16. I've always loved it. Uh, and so I have long ago accepted that I'll never fly an F-16. <laughs> um, that's just not a thing that's ever going to happen. But, you know, I can do it in, in a simulator, and that's really a lot of fun. So. Uh, I went ahead and splurged. <clears throat> Instead of spending money on the plane, I went and bought an Oculus. So I've got the, the headset and I've been, uh, I bought the F-16 for DCS and I've been playing that. And that is the greatest thing ever. It is so fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, I will say, man, the F-16 and the Su-25, like I've also been trying to play the Frogfoot in, in DCS, trying to learn how to fly that thing. And wow, um, it's a simulator. It's not arcadey. You do everything. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, you, there's a lot of knowledge and it really makes me appreciate what our warfighters are doing. So like these aviators that are flying the F-16s and whatnot over these air shows. Yeah, they're doing cool stuff for, for giggles and, you know, uh, go America, you know, that's good feelings is what that's about. But those guys, they are consummate professionals. They're amazing at what they do. And the level of knowledge that goes into that, like, just look at the cockpit in an F-16, look at all the buttons or F-18 or an EA-10, whatever. Look at everything. They know in detail what every single setting does and how to use it. And it's just, it's amazing. And apparently DCS, pretty thoroughly replicates that, which is awesome. And I don't know what the hell I'm doing when I'm flying it, but I'm having fun at it. So anyway, so uh, that's kind of a ramble. I've been doing some of that and that's a lot of fun, I will tell you. Um, in the foreground of the video, you can see there is, uh, my tank is down on its side. I've actually taken that tank home and am uh, doing some water testing there. So I filled it full of water and I'm letting it sit there uh, full of water to see if any leaks spring up or show up 
and hopefully they won't because that'll be a pain if they do. Uh, and we'll see. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. I'm going to give it a couple days of just sitting there full of water to see what happens. And then the final thing I wanted to mention was, I don't remember. I do know that in this video, some of my sound is off, like I'm talking, but it's talking to the camera as opposed to this lavalier mic. And that's because my little Tascam lavalier mic thing is dying. Um, it's seen better days. The problem is I keep dropping it. <laughs> <laughs> I really should stop dropping it. Um, they make one that is like you clip it into your shirt and you talk and then you've got it sitting over here. So it's not actually like it's Bluetooth, I guess. And I don't have one of those. So I've got this one and I, I do drop it a lot and that's not good. So uh, if, if the sound cuts out or if there is no audio, I may have to rely on camera audio sometimes. Sorry about that. So that's what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> other than that, there was something else I wanted to talk about and tell you about and I don't remember what it was. So, oh well, I guess I'll get, let you get back to the build. I really do appreciate you guys though. Thank you so very much. Uh, like I said, the, the, the folks who came up and talked to me at Sun and Fun, you really did reinvigorate me. It was such an amazing experience. I can't wait to Oshkosh. I already got it all booked, gonna be there the whole week and it's going to be amazing. In fact, um, <clears throat> we're gonna, I'm gonna be there the, the Sunday before because there's a big RV10 gathering. And so I'm gonna be there for that uh, with all the builders, like everyone's gonna be there. So it's gonna be amazing. Can't wait. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, if you really wanna support me, you can jump over to my Patreon page and just for a dollar a month, you guys can help support this channel. It means the world to me. And again, if you don't wanna do that, if you see me at one of these gatherings, come up and slap me on the back and say hi. And uh, that'd be awesome. Okay, so I've got this in now. Ow, didn't need that fingernail. So this now is, is correctly in. I've got them both in, what a pain in the butt. It's still very tight, which I think is a good thing. I mean, it's, it's not unreasonable. It's, it's basically where it was. So that's in now. This is the um, actuator that actually does the work. And I need to go through and wire it up eventually but for now i'm going to leave that there i got to get this part working so that uh you know you fabricate a couple little jobbies that go in between here and then that does the work of moving the main bar now what's interesting is i also have this kit which i think is neat and it does you know flat positioning um it's all one connected piece which i don't love that so this will have to like live down in there but the idea is you've got these two pieces that you fasten to this piece and this piece so that as as it comes out, there's these little notches in here. It, it knows that's that's flaps up, you know, and then as you do this, like the little sensors, as you pull it out, boom, that's 50% and boom. That's 100%, and I have to assume that's oh dear God stop, because <laughs> there's there's a de there's a detent on this side. I mean, if it goes any farther, this will actually pull out. So um, kind of cool, kind of a cool system. Hopefully, we'll get this working. And it comes with a switch, uh, you know, big donkey switch. I may change that. That's that is a giant switch. We'll see. I'm not sure I want to use that switch. Momentary up on, yeah, on, off, I guess, momentary. We'll see. How would that work? Why is there a momentary? Anyway, um, and then this is a big system or big box that I guess I could just mount it down like in here somewhere. I'm not, I'll have to look at the instructions and see if they suggest where to mount it. Um, but so yeah, that's coming, not doing that yet, but for now, this has all worked. This has been a giant pain in the butt. I need to get this final crown screw on. Uh, the one thing I would say is with this piece right here, when you're putting this in, this bolt that you that runs through here is longer than the amount of clear space here. And so that's why these bolts are here. You have to take these bolts out, 
put this in, this fabricated spacer, this piece, this fabricated spacer in, and then put it through this one, and then screw these in, and all, all the same, this tightening this back bolt sucked. But it's doable, clearly. So now that I've got that done, um, I need to find a good way to run these wires so they don't, you know, there's no chance of them tying, you know, getting, getting messed up on anything. So wire management is going to be super, super important. But I did test this with a 9-volt battery, and this does uh, spin. So, and then it, it does work. So going to fabricate the other piece here, and then, uh, yeah, I'm excited. This was, you know, the funny thing is I, I was, I spent, gosh, like three or four days trying to get this in, just this piece, getting these bars in here. I spent like three or four days trying to get these bars in and failed and failed and failed because I was trying to do it exactly as the plan said and exactly as everyone was saying, you have to do it. And it's like, okay, no, actually, I, I could solve this a different way that's just as valid, works just as well, and I did it in two hours. So, yeah, uh, follow the plans. But it's okay to take slight deviations as long as, I think, as long as the spirit of the plans are still uh, adhered to. And that's where we're at on this. So I've got these in. I'm going to get this last bolt tightened. And then uh, from there, I'm not sure what's next. <laughs> so that's what we're doing next is whatever is next. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, thanks so much. Really appreciate you guys watching. I know this was a bit of a short video. Uh, talked about what was going on, all the sun and fun stuff that I did. Everyone that came out and hung out with me, it was really great meeting you. Had a good time. Uh, stay tuned. I have some interesting stuff going on. And yeah, I'm going to play some more DCS. That's good stuff. See you later.